Hey, Cappy, you know what time it is? What time is it? It's a new season. Yes, How's it going, it ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number one of the new season on Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that discusses and reviews Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, I'll try not to botch, like I just did in our original intro, this is the second recut one. We have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news and rumors related to the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWP, and is also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show Brand Wars. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow podcasts on Twitter, No Holds Bar WP, where you can join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are now also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching up No Holds Bar WP. All links will be in the description below on YouTube. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the blissful bass, Mr. Corporate himself corporate cappy blissed off for, from what we just experienced today yeah um so as we've done week one in we might as well start off with a rant yeah week one of the new season and we're already starting off with a rant our glorious rants uh yeah la fella what's up guys yeah greg i botched okay i botched hard in the beginning i had Sorry. the button press new again. season you know new season gonna, gonna get all the kinks worked out <laughs> And the first one, he, he, he botched my first name, too. Yeah. Um, so, to about my address. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start off with a, a rant of the new season here. Um, so in our glorious city of Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, home of Ty Dillinger, we have a uh, certain store called Gags and Giggles. Yes, it's that. It's named Gags and Giggles. Get all the giggles out now, pun intended. Um, they have WWE merch in it. They have action figures, toy belts, uh, shirts. Old shirts. Old shirts. I'm talking old, like Red Cena, Never Give Up t-shirt. Ryback. Back when you face the rock and Ryback, you know, garbage shit like that. Um, <laughs> so we go in there and we go to the back where all the WB shit is. And they have it all blocked off except for the t-shirts. Okay, we're like, okay, what the hell? We came here half a year ago and it's, it looks this exact same. Like they didn't finish it. So we look, we were going through the t-shirts and laughing at some of like the generic t-shirts. They had like a shit ton of CM Punk, John Cena, Ryback, Sheamus, uh, the Rock Soldier t-shirt. And we want to get up to the figures and stuff. So we go up to the front where the owner of the store is. And my buddy Corporate Cappy, um, I was I didn't get up to the front of the store first. He did. So you, you kind of tell us what happened when you first got up there. I went up and I said, uh, hey, can we could take a look at the figures? And she goes, oh, sorry, that part of the store is closed off. I don't, I'm the only person working, and apparently it needs to be manned. <laughs> and when we say closed off, it's just a rope. <laughs> it's just a rope hanging across. And then she go, she gives me the most ridiculous response ever. She goes, if you tell me what you want, I'll go get it. I can't see what you have. <laughs> it's all the way up the stairs. Like, yeah, let, let me just poke through this thing and let me take a look. Oh, yeah, I want uh, whatever one that is there. I can't even read it. Give me that one. <laughs> I told I told Gabby here. I'm like, we should have gone to her and, be, and, and threw her off. But like, oh, can we get Elias Samson? It's right up there. Gone. She's going to go look. She doesn't have it. Oh, no, we don't have it. Oh, no, I meant uh, Oni Lorkin. Unbelievable. <laughs> like, the rest of the store has got a bunch of shit in it. And you're telling me you can't let guys walk up and look at action figures. It's weird, too, because you can see it from the front of the store. You can see the section. It's raised. So I don't know. She was just we, we had enough. She was just being a goon, man. We just we, we couldn't sit there and argue with her. She literally pissing us I was, off. I literally said, what, "What are we gonna do? Steal the action figures and walk out the back door? What is there? Yeah, walk in there with no bags? Like, we'd be literally bluntly obvious that we had figures hidden under our sweaters. <laughs> what about all the other stuff in the store that people can? Yeah, steal? she might just not give a shit. I'm gonna go back there and steal a bunch of shirts, but it's okay, right? You don't give a fuck, lady. There's jerseys that are worth like a hundred dollars, yeah. and then there's these twenty dollar action figures. Unbelievable. But she cares more about those. Those are more important. And then she goes, oh, I have the shirts here. Well, I don't want the shirts. I said I want action figures. Why, why would I want the shirts? Why do I want a John Cena shirt or a Ryback? <laughs> you don't want Ryback. I want Ryback. <laughs> Not after what I... <laughs> Mr. Back. Yeah, he already got into it with uh, Cronin and JD this yeah. weekend. <laughs> Props to those Fuck. guys. <laughs> I, love, I love Cronin in that one. He's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so that's our beginning rant for the new season. Gags and giggles, man. You guys just made the list. Did Honorary they, members of the list. Made the this list. Week. 
gags and giggles. They are a gag and a giggle, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> um, the delete that store. Yeah, it's literally. become obsolete. It has. In this expedition of gold. Could have had her business, but no, she wouldn't open yes. the stupid <laughs> Anyways, um, Twitter fan of the month. Uh, we didn't really get to name it off. I think I was I had planned for the lowdown in Orlando. And speaking of lowdown in Orlando, guys, thank you for all the support uh, to you fans out there who tuned in and who gave us some Skype calls. It was really, really a uh, huge success on our part, and uh, we thought it was a huge success. So thank you. Uh, we do plan on doing something like yep. that in the near future. So it was our first stay time. tuned for that. We learned a lot. We yep. will be putting a cap on the duration of the calls. Yep, some calls will be capped. Uh, we're thinking around 10 minutes, which is fair for everybody. Perfect call 10. Up. Yep. For Ty Dillinger, <laughs> since we're Niagara Falls. Pun intended. I'm going I'm to throw a pun in there. Yep. But uh, I wanted to do Twitter fan of the month in that show, and it just completely slipped my mind. We had so much going on, all um, contests. So I'm going to do it now for Twitter fan of the month, for, for the man- month of March, and that means you get a shout-out on every lowdown show for the entire month of April, and you get your tweets read first if you tweet in. I want to point out we didn't get a lot of tweets this week. Where you Shame on that? you guys that didn't tweet this week. Shame on you. I've had that tweet up since Wednesday. Shame. Shame. Uh, Twitter fan of the month for March. We, uh, I'm not going to have a drum roll or anything. We just uh, basically decided. And it has to do with uh, basically the, the the contest I ran during WrestleMania. And it was uh, won unanimously by Juggy Brown, a.k.a. Juggy Badass, on Twitter. He won it by about 60-plus points, so we're giving Twitter Fan of the Month to our boy, Juggy Badass. So congratulations, uh, Juggy Badass. You'll be getting all your tweets read first in a shout-out on every show. And here's your shout-out. Shout-out to Juggy Brown, at Juggy Badass on Twitter, for winning Twitter Fan of the Month for the month of March. Always a constant contributor to the podcast, always on the the live chat as well. So, yep, yep. And, we uh, want to give you props for that, too. And your crate's coming out soon. We just got it figured out today. Yep, got we, everything. Uh, finished it. we finished your crate for you. We'll be shipping it out maybe this week or on Monday, so stay tuned for that. And as soon as I ship it, I will let you guys know. And uh, I'll be getting some mailing information for all you guys that won prizes during the Lowdown show, or the, the sorry, the uh, Lowdown in Orlando. I still got I got your uh, your mini prizes. I still got to get your shipping addresses so I can uh, mail it out in uh, letter form because they're not that big. But uh, that actually makes a huge difference up here. So anyways, um, now they want to talk about before the show, Patreon and GoFundMe, guys. Uh, basically, me and Corporate Cappy want to go to WrestleMania next year. Um, that is our main focus, is getting to WrestleMania. And I've been asked many times on Twitter if you, we are going to start a Patreon account. And you know what? I've started one. So the only sole purpose, we're not asking for money. We're not telling you guys that you have to go and contribute or pay. We don't. We're just putting it out there because we got asked so many times about it. So the main focus on both of the Patreon and the GoFundMe accounts are going to go towards us getting to WrestleMania because me and Corporate Cappy are planning on driving there from Niagara Falls, Canada to all the way to New Orleans and that's going <laughs> to, that's a lot of mileage if you think about it and you go check it out and uh, basically the only, the only thing that the Patreon and um, GoFundMe account is going to pay for is our gas, those will go strictly towards our gas money and anything that that you know kind of helps towards us getting to WrestleMania because I don't know, we're not rich. I'm not saying we're not millionaires here. We can't be like all the other YouTubers and all the other podcasters who can afford to go down there and get handed shit all the time. Especially because we're in Canada, so our money is automatically less than yeah, yours. It's right ridiculous. off the bat. It's, oh, it looks like it's going to be like that. Um, but yeah, that's basically what the sole purpose of Patreon and the, our GoFundMe account are. If you like to go to them. Um, I do have the links here. I probably I kind of botched that already that I don't have the links up. But uh, they're they're pinned on No Holds Barred Twitter. Yeah, they're pinned or not anymore. I have actually our lowdown show pinned, but uh, oh. they're on there. But if you want, they'll be in the YouTube description below as well. GoFundMe.com slash NHBWP Mania and Patreon.com slash NHBWP. Uh, the Patreon, it's if you want to. Um, <laughs> Prince Jones is joining the chat. Y'all miss me. Yeah. We've actually been talking about your ridiculous bookings a lot, Prince Jones. They've been freaking hilarious. I went back and um, listened to them. They yeah. were legendary. Um, and uh, Patreon is, if you want to, it's a, it's a monthly subscription thing. I know about it. And uh, GoFundMe is just a one-time payment. Anything helps, guys. doesn't matter. But we're not sitting here and making you do it. So if you don't want to do it and you don't have the funds, don't make yourself do it. It's just they're out there because we've been asked so many times about it. So... Those are just the base is basically the plug I have, I'm going to be doing every show. So just uh, and it's got our backstory in there. Me and Corporate Cappy's a little bit about us and more about our uh, 
our our, our non podcasting lives and what we go through on a daily basis. So if you want to go there, it's a little bit of a good read. I think I did a fantastic job on it. So uh, go check it out, guys. Patreon and GoFundMe links are in the description below. Uh, other than that. Let's get into the show. In Raw SmackDown after Mania this week lived up to expectations, I think. I think we're both in agreement with that. Um, not too much, though. I think it's all due to the superstar shakeup that was announced this week. I and it's like, happening yeah. next week already. That's really freaking soon for some reason. I feel like they didn't really want to start a lot of feuds this week. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see who gets moved and uh, basically what happens after the trades. Uh, as for this week, both shows were good. Raw, we still think, won by a little bit this week for the first time in a long time. This is probably since the, the draft, which is interesting. It's only down from here. We had some NXT call-ups this week and a return at WrestleMania. And speaking about it, let's talk about WrestleMania a bit, Corp Cappy. Um, you didn't enjoy it that much. I didn't. Uh, I kind of went back and rewatched it at uh, certain matches, not all of it. My opinion is slightly changed by a little bit, but if I'm rating WrestleMania right now, Six out of ten. Overhyped. It's always overhyped, to be honest. And what we need corporate cap, you want to point out, and we it basically, what sums it all up for us, it was called missed opportunity. Missed opportunity mania. They missed so much opportunity at WrestleMania to do so many things. And it kind of did it this week on both shows. They, they did stuff they should have done at yep. the card of WrestleMania. And it felt so rushed, the matches and mm. the, the feuds leading up to it. A lot of them I didn't care about because they already had rushed other things and the feuds prior to WrestleMania, and we already did a rebooked episode of what it should have been. A, a rebooked one would have looked, looked a lot better, to be honest. That would have been that would have felt like WrestleMania right there. But I, I will change my opinion. I, I've told you guys for weeks on end that I was looking not forward to the AJ Styles and Shane match. I thought the feud up and the build up was good, and I thought the match was going to be shit. The match was actually all right. I'll give it. I'll give it to them. Shane pulled off some shit in that match. I didn't think he could and would do. Uh, the shooting star press really got me off guard. There, I didn't know he could do it. Still, at his age, I didn't think he could pull it off. But he did all right. I know Styles could easily go in there and wrestle a broomstick and make it look good. But I think Shane hold, held his own a little bit. I know. I, I still wouldn't have seen. I still would have loved to see something better. And I think they're they're planning Styles for that for next year's WrestleMania, um, which is awesome because we're going to that. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I think props to it Shane. was all right. Props to Shane. I'll give him props. And it's, it's it's sad. As for the rest of the show, I mean, yeah, I'll get into the women's stuff later, but that that was just like rush garbage. Mm -hmm. um, the Lesnar-Goldberg match went longer than 20 seconds, which was shocking. Reigns and Taker was god-awful. I yeah. mean, I, you talked enough about that on the WrestleMania review. I don't need to go into that. Yeah, I and don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> it's just going to make me upset. Besides the Hardys, I mean, I hate Jeff Hardy, but I like the Hardy boys in general being back. I mean, that was the biggest pop of the night. There yeah. was nothing else that really was... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word here. Shocking. There wasn't yeah. any... In, uh, it felt like a... Something that catches you. Yeah. And it's a rust No surprise moment. factor. Besides yeah. the Hardys, everything else was predictable as shit. Yeah. Everything else, it was like, wow, I, c I could have predicted this whole card, and it was going to work out the same way that I thought it was going to work out. No swerves, no nothing. And this is supposed to be your best show of the year, and you look at what WrestleCon, or not WrestleCon, Wrestle Kingdom did with Okada and... Yeah, I really want to know, because Vince Omega. said that he had a... A uh, match set up that was going to beat out Okada and Omega. There's a yeah, what one. match? What match was that, Vince? Was it Goldberg and uh, Brock Lesnar? Unbelievable. You'd probably would say Roman Reigns and Undertaker. <laughs> the build, it just didn't feel like WrestleMania weekend that whole week. I'm so glad we did not go to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I have nothing else to say about WrestleMania. Yeah. It was pretty crap. It, it's sad because I'd love to do a full out review, but it's you can't do it when the lackluster mania. You can't. Like I did, I tried doing it myself, and I just couldn't bring myself to do a really complete review of that on Monday on like, Sunday night. Obvious, Heat. Obviously, the production of it was great, and the stage and everything, and the entrances are always great. But the actual in ring product they gave us was not up to par. No. So we'll get into your tweets out there. We'll start off the show as we always do here on the Lowdown Show, and. I got to do it right. I can't botch this. Um, I don't know if Juggy Brown or Juggy Badass has sent in uh, responses because we got a lot of late responses this week. I'm just going to double check. He did. All right. So, because he won Twitter fan of the month for March, Juggy Badass at Azazel YT on Twitter will get his tweets read first. 
So Juggy Badass says, both shows were great this week. I give both 9 out of 10. But on the other thing, or the other hand, why in the actual fuck does why get buried? You and me both think the same thing, Juggy Badass. I don't understand. It, we'll get into that when we do our review. He's such a great champion. I don't understand the direction they are taking. On another note, Kyle, I understand how how broken you are. The Undertaker is such an icon. As for me, seeing Edge and HBK retired literally brought me to tears. Both are my favorites of all time. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you for telling us that. Um, so sad to see Taker go. There will never be another hashtag. Thank you, Taker. Thank you for your tweets, Juggy Brown. Definitely 150,000% agree with you with all those responses. And we, again, congratulate you for winning Twitter Fan of the Month for the month of March. Uh, getting to the next tweets, and that's by Glorious Greg, our last Twitter Fan of the Month for February. At XGilly929. Both shows were solid and very interesting. It was good to see Finn Balor and Emma back on Raw. This week's Raw gets a 9. <laughs> oh, God. Hashtag First one of the season Smackdown was a perfect 10 Pun intended (laughs) Of course it is I'd say it too It's so awesome to see Nakamura and Ty Dillinger on Smackdown live roster Can't wait to see what WWE does with the two of them And I give Smackdown this week a perfect 10 (laughs) That's right I love the puns man Puns everywhere what did you guys think of No Man Gains getting booed for 10 minutes? I thought it was hashtag glorious. Fantastic. <laughs> Gl- glorious Greg. That was probably the single-handedly greatest moment on TV since CM Punk's pipe bomb, okay? That was fantastic. I haven't seen a crowd take over a show like that since Daniel Bryan. That was great. Uh, what are you guys looking forward to the most with the superstar shakeup that Vince announced? Hashtag... <laughs> Greg, what did the roar have to do with that? Why did you put that in there? Do you mean Braun's going to SmackDown? Is that what you mean? (laughs) I'm not looking forward to anything right now, to be honest. Uh, Greg, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm scared. I don't even want to think about anything. I don't know what's going to happen. I think I'd rather see Prince Jones shake up the roster. We'll trade Prince Jones for uh, Michael Chow. How about that? I trade Prince Jones for the great Kali, so you can (laughs) Kali chop his ass. Mm -hmm. Or or Albert. (laughs) (laughs) Next set of tweets, Casey Salvis. That's Salvas94. WrestleMania was okay to see Undertaker retire, especially for him to lose. Was okay. It's sad to see the Undertaker retire, sorry. Especially for him to lose a final match against Garbage Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> Love the crowd on Raw. Though anti-Reigns SmackDown was, go- was good. Great to see Nakamura on the blue brand. Sad that AJ is probably going to Raw next week. Let's hope Rollins goes to SmackDown. But at least it looks like Garbage Reigns is not going to SmackDown uh, until WrestleMania. Hmm. Uh, 5 out of 10 for Raw. 7 out of 10 for for uh, SmackDown. Uh, oh, okay. Gave WrestleMania a 5 out of 10. Fair Hard enough rating. rating. Raw, 7 out of 10 because of the Hardys. And SmackDown, 8 out of 10. Okay, I like those ratings, Casey. Thank you for your tweets as always. And let's get into some more tweets. I have it in the other tweet right over here. And we'll start off with Tony Mercer at Recrem Why Not. Oh, run the table, boy. Yeah. <laughs> They're both a lot of fun this week. Returns and debuts galore. And superstar shakeup to look forward to or to be scared of. <laughs> SmackDown needs AJ. I'd give both 8 out of 10 as they were solid shows. Question, what, <laughs> what match stole the show at WrestleMania? Best match was Shane AJ, in my opinion. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Prince Jones gives it a 10 out of 10. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, stole the show. Maybe in Vince's mind. <laughs> Prince Jones, are you Vince McMahon? <laughs> uh, I'd probably say Styles and, and Shane was the most entertaining match. It's R- close. Rollins, For me, Rollins it's a tie Triple with H Rollins did. and Triple H, man. That actually was better than I actually expected. I can't, I can't believe it actually started in the match. I think it's just because people got blinded because of what's happened to Rollins lately. And this match, I remember around last last year around SummerSlam time, people wanted this match to happen at WrestleMania. People were talking about it and went, oh, my God, I can't wait for Rollins and Triple H to face each other. It's going to be epic. And it's just, people just kind of forgot and lost interest in it. And look what happened. Well, That's why it, it turned out to be a really good match, and people were surprised it was a good match because it originally was going to be a good match ever since then. Good so entrances. They had, too. I know, all fantastic Rollins entrances. came out with the torch. 
Yep, and then King Triple Slayer. H on the bike. Yeah, he's, he's still he, under biker your bike taper? or something? With no. the police? All right. Uh, of course, he's bearing Undertaker. <laughs> Not even facing him. Uh, Mason Dunbar at Dunbear Vlogs. Raw was a 10 out of 10. It was awesome. Even the promos were good. SmackDown Live was okay. I thought it was the worst of... since the split. 5 out of 10. 10 out of 10 for Raw. And 5 out of 10 for SmackDown. Did you not see Ty Dillinger in the show? That deserves a 10 already off the bat. <laughs> Pun intended. <Okay> then. <laughs> All right. Interesting ratings. <laughs> Colin at Gemma NU1. Raw, I gave a 10. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> Hardy's in the revival. Only a few things I was met on. Not much of the cruiserweights and Zayn Mahal. Zayn Mahal's match. We'll wait till we get into that. No need for that. So as long as they keep Roman away from the title, I'll be happy. Also, he has to be heel now. As for SmackDown, uh, I have given them a 10 thanks to Shinsuke and Dillinger. But Orton being world champion and Corbin and not winning the IC title just doesn't make sense to me. So I give SmackDown a 9.2. <laughs> what is point two? Yeah, what are you giving me? I really want to know, Call, where you're giving a point two. I hate two. these point two, point three, four. Like, where do you get this from? <laughs> God. That's my, that's my blissed off moment of the week already. There you go. Oh, man. In your fucking point three ratings. <laughs> and as for the Roman thing, ah, I can't even tell you that he's a heel right now. I think he's just playing the heat. You know he's going to get heat. He just he literally he didn't have to say anything this week. Every time no. he put the microphone to his face. Yeah. Um, yeah, he said, this is my yard now. No, but he did it for like 15 minutes where he yeah. tried to put the microphone to his mouth. And our last set of tweets comes from Michael Chow TV. 2016 Noel's Bustling Podcast Fan of the Year, and that's why he gets his own Twitter theme. So congratulations, to Michael Shaw, again for winning uh, Twitter Fan of the Year. I guess I can still congratulate you. I don't know why, but... Yep. Anyways, his tweets, both shows really brought it. I really enjoyed both shows better than Mania, but curious on how both shows do without returns and debuts. Hmm. Raw Hell is <laughs> frozen over. 10 out of 10. Another robbing 10. What are you guys doing? The 10s are just flying all over uh, the place. They did everything week. right. I felt the three hours was used well for once, and I actually want to tune in again. Oh, it's only down from here. <laughs> Greg says, I'm coming for that title, Michael Chow. <laughs> all right, glorious Greg. We'll see. We'll see. I liked everything except they made Braun look like a pussy again in that filler match with Zayn and Mahal, but all is far. And I, and I kind of clicked X on something. My bad. Where is it? There it is. Okay, I got it back. And the ending was bad. During the Bray blackout, I was expecting a Sister Abigail reveal, but just Bray teleporting to the ramp like a pussy. <laughs> Question. Predict any surprise superstar shakeups. I predict SmackDown Live getting Owens and the U.S. title Ambrose and the IC title going to Raw. Mm. So surprising shakeups, eh? I don't well, know. I don't know what you can consider surprising at this point. And what's a surprise? Uh, I guess the surprise for me would be Samoa Joe for some reason going over to SmackDown. And uh, Shinsuke going already back over to Raw. I mean, I'm scared it's going to happen, but it's that's kind of a surprise. Let's go with uh, Kurt Hawkins for Titus O'Neil. <laughs> Trading catering service businesses. <laughs> uh, interesting one. American Alpha, maybe. Yeah. I've been, uh, I've been seeing... Uh, American Alpha for the New Day, maybe? That sounds good. Maybe a, because uh, I heard a Kurt Angle maybe kind of influencing the American Alpha and building them up and, you know, maybe saying, like, look, uh, you're coming over Raw. It's a new tag team division. You're going to have to build your way up from the ground up. I want to build you guys into the next uh, team angle. You know what I mean? I, I can see kind of something like that happening, maybe. We'll get um, into more of that later. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's it for tweets. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all your tweets out there and for contrib contributing constantly to the show. Um so we'll just jump into it and do the Raw review. And uh, live from the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida. Or we could have been, but we uh, good thing we didn't go this year. <laughs> Awful. That would have been bad. The Raw after WrestleMania SmackDown would have been great. Yeah. That would have been better than WrestleMania itself. Um, <laughs> Greg says Kalisto to Raw for Rusev. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome Rusev. Oh, yeah, the injured Rusev. <laughs> uh, opening segment with Raw. Start off with a huge and long Undertaker chant, and it got mixed in with some Roman sucks chants, so uh, that was actually great to see. And then right on perfect cue, Roman Reigns comes out. 
I don't and think I've heard booze this, this loud. This is the before. biggest heat I've ever heard. Like, and this straight is like up. worse than Cena in Chicago. Literally, man. crowd chanting "Fuck you, Roman! You suck! Go away! Shut the fuck up!" Before he even says anything. <laughs> and he's they, trying to talk for ten minutes. He tries to put the mic like to a, his mouth, and it just boos. Like they just get louder. It's like he controls the the, the level of the booze. <laughs> Eventually, he gets on the mic. It says, "This is my yard now," <laughs> and then walks away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> If there's ever a way to get the biggest heat imaginable, this was it. <laughs> this is a good job by Roman. Mm-hmm. Uh, we moved on, and we had the Hardys return to Monday Night Raw. And the club getting their rematch clause already, man, right off the bat. Interesting. For the Raw Tag Team Championships, the Hardys first returned to Raw in a long time. I don't remember their last time they were on Raw back in, like, the PG era. That garbage. Uh, it was a good match. On Raw, will we ever see the Hardys broken again? Some saying no, some saying yes. I think it's in, a hybrid. In my eyes, Matt Hardy's yeah. still doing the delete. He's still doing the yeah. But I think it's because of the um, Kevin Dunn could not mute the crowd. I don't think I think Vince held Dunn back. I think this was done on purpose. Okay. Um, anyways, I think the only they're doing this hybrid, as you said. Because they don't want to go through legal action with TNA. They don't want to deal with that. As much as Darby knows they would win because their lawyers are way better than Anthem and uh, TNA's lawyers, I honestly don't think they could sit here and say, okay, well, I don't want to deal with the stress. Let's just let it figure itself out. Um, let Rebby Hardy you know, do her thing and let it just you know, all play out. And, and until it finally gets resolved, I think that's when we'll see the Hardys officially become broken in the WWE. But as for now, I like this. I honestly, I can, I can deal with this them being this hybrid kind of thing. I feel like they don't want to turn them completely broken because only hardcore fans would know who the broken Hardys right. are. The casuals just know the Hardy boys with Team Extreme. And I think they're thinking of a way to broke them, man. There's, it's going to be interesting. Like maybe like I don't know. They they lose a really bad match and Matt has like a head trauma or something. They they play off an angle like that, and then they do like this uh, this kind of like at home kind of thing, like a video package where it shows like Jeff taking care of Matt at home and he becomes this like this broken guy. Maybe they do something like that. I don't know. Well, um, they they won the title, so that that doesn't that uh, revive them from bro- being. Broken? I guess it, it's. I guess that's what it, maybe it means. And it, 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 people are saying like, and I've seen it. Matt Hardy is still acting broken on Twitter, and his his name is still hashtag broken Matt Hardy. It hasn't left his uh, and his Twitter bio hasn't changed yet. So and he's still doing the delete. Thing. I think they're still. I think he's still the heart hybrid, as you said. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with the Hardys later down the road. I don't care, guys. It doesn't really bother me. They can be this hybrid for all I care. Um, people like make sure it, like ruins their day for some reason. Like guys, just relax. Eventually, he will become fully broken. Just let it play out right now. We, we got the surprise return. I don't know how that's not good enough. They won the titles, for Christ's sakes, at WrestleMania. I don't think they've ever... Did they Have they ever won the titles at WrestleMania? No. That was Jeff's first WrestleMania win, by the way. Jeff Hardy. So, anyways. Hardy's won on Raw with a twist of fate into a swanton bomb. Basically, their tag team finisher to retain the tag team championships. And this division has gotten an overhaul, which we'll get into later. So. And hopefully, Gallows and Anderson go over to SmackDown. Maybe that's why they had the rematch already. Yeah. Uh... Neville faces Mustafa Ali next. Poor Cruiserweight still, man. The crowd paid zero attention this week to this match. They're chanting random things. There's two beach balls that are going across the crowd. The crowd starts chanting beach ball mania. Oh, okay, because that was what I saw. Because I saw the crowd like turning backwards and looking at something. Yeah, it's beach balls. The whole time. Like, someone, what are they looking someone at? Someone blew up two beach balls, and they're bouncing it around the arena, paying no fucks to the Cruiserweight match. And if anyone cared, Neville won with the Ring of Saturn submission. That was it. I mean, Mustafa Ali's got a lot of potential. I hope that they, they build him up a bit. His yeah. finisher is unbelievable. Man, he's, and he's just... His rest Wrestling style and his tech, his technique is, is good. It's it's beyond anyone he can compare. He can compare to a lot of people in WWE, and he's all, already one hundred times better than them. The guy is a fucking workhorse. So I hope they do a lot of good things with him, or do something with him in the cruiserweight division. I think he deserves a title shot. In my honest opinion. His song, I'm a go hard. I'm yeah. a I'm a go. <laughs> Anyways, we got Vince McMahon comes out of a limo backstage, and he gets on his way to the ring, the crowd giving him a huge ovation, even singing, singing his theme song as he gets to the ring. <laughs> they did this last year in Raw after WrestleMania, I remember that. Um, the crowd chanted, Roman sucks at him, and he's like, oh, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> uh, he announces a superstar shakeup for next week. And uh, talks about Stephanie being hurt for and being out for a while, and the crowd cheer. <laughs> He's like, "What's the matter with you?" <laughs> the whole crowd's going, "Delete, delete, delete." 
<laughs> he said they were being savages. Yeah, Greg says it would suck if Styles goes to Raw and the club goes to SmackDown. It would it would seem like WWE is trying to keep them split. I've heard Greg. We'll get into the news part that they're trying to get uh, them together again. So it makes sense. Here's hoping. Um, he says they're gonna now. Or, our, uh, Vince McMahon announces that they're going to have to announce a new general manager with Stephanie being gone, and out comes Teddy Long. <laughs> because first Vince says he was newly inducted into the Hall of Fame, Fame and then Teddy Long comes out with his music. And it, they must have fucked up backstage because there's no Titan drawn or anything. They kind of messed up with that. Maybe they didn't have it right away. Um, but he pulls in our truth after Vince telling him it's not him. He goes, oh, my bad. <laughs> holla, holla, holla. Uh, and he and does his dance. I, th- I find it great. And then Vince finally introduces it, and it's Kurt Angle. He Kurt says Angle. Kurt Angle. doesn't even say, yeah. like, here he is. And... Yeah, because they kind of screwed up at first, too. It was supposed to happen. He kind of calls Kurt Angle a prima donna. But uh, I think it was because of production. I think if they fucked up. Way to go, done. But Kurt Angle is the new GM of Gen- or Monday Night Raw. So he's now been the GM of both shows. And it's uh, interesting because uh, we knew it. we kind of saw it happening a couple weeks ago. It was uh, announced uh, in the rumors, so... I, I like it. The crowd I really like it a loved lot. it. Yeah, I think Kurt Angle is going to do a really good job. He had a, a lot of stuff to, uh, with backstage segments that were hilarious. I think Kurt Angle is going to be a really good GM. Um, I think so, too. And we've seen how good Daniel Bryan's been as a GM of SmackDown. So former superstars look and, like it's the key. And there's still potential for yeah. him to get into it with a superstar and have one last yeah. match, maybe him and Joe. I think they just did a bad job with, with Mick Foley. They did. They they made him just look like a stupid weak asshole compared with with Steph McMahon. They did. I think they did a terrible job. Yeah, I think he, Angle's got to put up more of a fight. Shade, like, I think it's just it's just before he was also going through some stuff too, and now he's going for surgery. I think it, it wasn't really. You can't really uh, blame it on him a lot. So right. a lot of stuff contributed to him, you know, sucking as a, a GM for Raw. Uh, move on. Uh, New Day come out, and Kofi Kingston and Xavier are dressed like the Legion of Doom. For some with weird... ice cream cones <laughs> on the shoulder pads, they say that they wanted to whoop some ass at WrestleMania, and they would now issue an open challenge to anyone on Raw. And out comes the revival. Say, girl. are you kidding me? Oh my god! They got a huge pop. These Massive. guys, the crowd was singing their finally. song. They knocked over the ice cream cart. Fucking what's uh, Dawson coming over and boots the ice cream cart? The best tag team in <laughs> NXT history. I think. Oh man, they're so good. I think that's gonna revamp. I know everyone's saying, "Oh, I would have loved them on SmackDown. They would have done better." But you know what? They're they're actually the key ingredient they need to the revamp. Raw the tag, tag team division. needs like a really good pr- and, technical. And team. you look at the SmackDown division now, or the, the tag team division for Raw. You got the New Day, which might be get traded to SmackDown. The Revival, Cesaro and Sheamus, uh, club the club, who might get traded to, the Hardys now. Um, and Enzo and Cass. Enzo and Cass. Like, the, 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 the Titan Division is getting researched, and I actually like that. They could add maybe a little bit, few more, maybe, but... As uh, long as they use the Revival properly, and that's in yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Uh, they had a really good match. The, the, the New Day. Basically, like a showcase debut kind of match. New Day and job. They beat the hell out of the New Day, and they won with the Magic Killer, so... Magic Killer. Or Magic Killer with, uh, oh my god, what's their finishing name? Oh my god, I'm drawing a blank. I love their finishing move. It's awesome. Shattering Machine? Shattering Machine, that's it. It's awesome. Um, so Revival win. Like it. I like a as New long, Day. As long as they use them like they were used I'm going to New Day showcasing that and jobbing to the Revival makes them showcase to the casuals like what the Revival is all about. And that's just literally just fists. And they're, they're, all, they're a brutal... Beat throwback. the fuck up tag team. They're a throwback Throw, tag yeah. team to the to the four horsemen. Yeah, Shatter basically. Machine, great. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, backstage moment with Enzo and Cass and Kurt Angle. <laughs> Kurt, like, Enzo just running his spiel, <laughs> doing like, I'm a certified G and a bona fide stud. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's like, not any college I've heard of. <laughs> and he goes, I have no idea what you're talking about no. right now. <laughs> and then when... Uh, <laughs> when uh, Big Cass spells soft, S-A-W-F-T. And they leave. And they leave, he's like... That's not how you spell soft. <laughs> <laughs> this Kurt Angle is like oh, corny jokes. Yeah, and like, this is going to be oh. great, man. I, if this is what's to come with Kurt Angle as a GM, this is going to be fan-fucking-tastic. I cannot wait. Um, oh, God. We, we move on to something. And it, it's still, I thought they would at least, after WrestleMania, improve it. Like, we get a start. But it kind of looks like they're kind of waiting for the shakeup too, like I said. So, I don't know if they did this on purpose to not further any feuds. But we get Bailey, Sasha Banks... And Dana Brooke facing Charlotte Nia Jackson, the returning Emma. Emma's finally coming out with her heel thing, and she's 
She mm. played it hard, she man, and the great. crowd was actually behind she it. She so. jumped on the announce table and like threw her stuff on Saxton. Yeah, so I'm I'm lo- Emma, you fucking stay with this gimmick. Do, do you ever dare turn to Emelina, man? That was terrible. It I said done from the nothing. beginning that she should have never left this gimmick. Yeah. Why the hell did they even try to do this Emelina crap? Yeah, but the mm. match wasn't anything special. Sasha still no, won. Yeah, but still no heel turn from Sasha Banks. And uh, the only thing that yeah, I don't was, care. The only thing that was relevant after this match was Charlotte pushing. Yeah, Nia she Jax. freaked out on her team for losing. She and pushed then they beat on her. Emma and Nia Jax, and Nia Jax killed Charlotte. And Emma's like, "Yeah, no thanks," and rolled out of the ring. And the crowd's like, "Yeah, Emma." <laughs> Great job by Emma, but <laughs> yeah, Nia Jax just absolutely destroyed Charlotte. Maybe they're setting a Charlotte and Nia Jax feud. I, okay, I'm all for that. Keep Nia Jax away from that title. <laughs> Charlotte going to SmackDown. And Charlotte, I mean, it would be. I'm going to beat you up. Nia Jax. <laughs> <laughs> Dana uh, Brooke's still trying to be friends with Bailey and Sasha. And oh, she's cringe, crap. man. I don't even want to talk about her. I, really, I don't find the need to talk about her, so I don't talk about her. Until <laughs> she becomes relevant, I won't talk about her. I'm just going to like say that she's in the match, and I won't talk anything about it. So we'll move on. <laughs> uh, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman in the ring. But we got another typical promo boosting up Lesnar and his accomplishments. And as he's won the Universal Championship. And then they already they tease bring, something. They for bring next up year. something. And if, oh, did I ever cringe. <laughs> they bring up that Undertaker's now lost to two people. He's 23 and 2. And that the two should face each other. I'm like, no. <laughs> Reigns and Lesnar. They're teasing it for WrestleMania. Oh, my God. I really hope it's for SummerSlam. Please let it be for SummerSlam. I don't give a fuck if it's at SummerSlam. But Strowman then comes out. Okay, I'm like, this is more like it. All right, Strowman and Lesnar. This is what they should have done to begin with. Um, says that he's notices Lesnar now and, like, kind of pushes him on the shoulder where the title is. And then Le- Lesnar gets pissed off, lays down the title, like, challenging Roman to come across the line and fight me. And Strowman backs away. What is with Strowman backing away all the time all of a sudden? The crowd even chanted pussy at him. <laughs> Why is this guy backing away from people? Especially Brock Lesnar. That's a guy you want to, like, assert your dominance against, and you back away. You're not trying to be a heel. You're not doing any heel work here. You're looking straight up like a pussy, as the crowd would say. Literally, it's the it's the only way to make it Roman Reigns... Uh, it's the only way to look make Strowman, not Roman Reigns, Strowman look strong. I was going to say. Is you have him beat up on Brock Lesnar. But they fail again, missed opportunity they once had again. They walk away with against Big Show. And then going into the Battle Royal, I didn't even get to talk about that. That was fucking horrific. I don't want to talk about that. That whole Battle Royal didn't make any sense. Big yeah. Show and Strowman were eliminated like halfway through. And the guy that should have won after that, Sami Zayn, got eliminated. I'm like, kid, hey, I don't give a fuck about this anymore. Terrible. That, like I don't understand what he Vince wanted to build up Strowman for months, and then all of a sudden he's just taking him a nosedive. Yeah, it, garbage. Uh, Backstage we get Chris Jericho, <laughs> <laughs> and it was announced that Chris Jericho will get his rematch against Kevin Owens for the United States Championship. Jericho lists all his international friends of Jericho to cheer him on, man. <laughs> Jericho says it's the perfect place for him to get his revenge on Owens tonight. Uh, Jericho is going to start with the tip of Owens' finger. Owens escaped last night because Owens managed to put his finger on the rope. Jericho puts the tip of Owens' finger on the list. It's the tip of Owens' finger. You make the list. <laughs> Owens then attacks Jericho backstage. Joe appears out of nowhere and helps Owens, and they beat the shit out of Jericho. Owens ends up powerbombing uh, Jericho through a table. Now, at this point, I'm like, oh, my God. They literally just copied exactly what happened last year. If you guys remember last year, it's supposed to be a fatal four-way match to determine the number one contender for the Universal Cha- or the WWE World Championship because uh, everyone wanted to come out and challenge Roman Reigns. Um, so it's a different kind of match this year. That, uh, the main event was a tag team match. But Owens last year powerbombed Sami Zayn backstage through a table after getting interviewed. This year he's doing the exact same thing to Chris Jericho. After Jericho's interview, he gets powerbombed through a table. And, Joe, and he gets and replaced Joe was- with someone. And Joe was backstage helping him, yeah. too. <laughs> what the fuck? Why do they copy that? Is, is every year one person is going to get picked off and go through a table backstage by Owens? <laughs> I don't know. So we'll get into that in the main event when we get there. But uh, we got number one contenders match for the tag team titles. Cesaro and Sheamus versus Enzo and Cass. Crowd booed Enzo and Cass here. Cesaro and Sheamus came out with their kilts again. Kilts and suits. They got... They were over. Like the crowd, was, <laughs> the crowd had this chant. I love it. It was like, oh, what did it go? It was like, 
Same as in Cesaro. Da, da, da. Same as in Cesaro. Da, da, da. Yeah, the European crowd. <laughs> and then Cesaro would love that he played to it. Every time they'd say one time, he'd point to Seamus and then himself, and then he'd do the da da da. <laughs> and they, yeah, Benzo and Cass got booed. Yeah, they got booed. Wow. That was. Uh, so they got over as fuck at last year's Raw after us, man. Now they're booed this year. <laughs> Probably because the way they've been used is terrible. Yeah, you can tell in a year how bad they've turned. Uh, decent match. But Shishar, Cesaro, there. Cesaro and Sheamus. Not Cesaro. Cesaro. <laughs> and it's nice. I like it. Number one contenders. I like Enzo. that. Enzo just jobbing all the time. That makes the Hardys is going to be a really, really good match. Yeah. I like that. Uh, next, we move on. We got an awful match. Everyone hated this match on Twitter and literally made zero sense. Sami Zayn faced Juicehead Jinder Mahal. And it was a really quick match. Nothing else much to say. Sami Zayn won with the Hoover kick. Literally, it did nothing for anyone. I don't understand the point of this match was. Literally, it was because they got into a backstage argument in yeah, front Kurt of Kurt Angle. Angle. put him in a match. Fan fucking fantastic. Who cares? Who uh, cares? Sp- something better than that. Luke Tonkinson posted on Twitter about 12 minutes ago. For fuck's sake, sorry for the no-show on Twitter. Your, t- your tweet never turned up on my feed. Well, well maybe you should, uh, you know... Uh, put us in notifications there, Luke Donkison. Uh, start notifications. You, know, you can go you know, put first, you know? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got the main event. Smo Joe and Owens versus Seth Rollins. A surprise opponent. Jericho was supposed to compete, but due to earlier, won't be able to. Of course. So we got a surprise opponent, and it's Finn Balor. Everyone knew this was happening. This guy came back a month ago in March. He was going to return any time now. I saw him at the live event. Yep. And uh, it takes place here on Roth Rosen. He had a good reaction, too. Of course, the UK crowd and uh, Finn Balor coming from Ireland. Uh, really, really good match. I thought this was really well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, ended up with Finn Balor winning with a coup de gras. And uh, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor pulling off the win here. And they kind of gave like each other like a mutual respect stare yeah, down. Yeah, kind of stare down because uh, everyone knows that Seth Rollins is the one that injured Finn Balor, but it wasn't uh, on purpose, so... Uh, I, I guess that it's a good way to show that they had mutual respect, and that's how I end the show. And uh, Raw score for me got a seven out of ten this week. Uh, Craig Enzo and Cast a SmackDown for the Ascension that literally would do nothing for anybody because they're two <laughs> useless teams. <laughs> for the VOD villains, oh wait, oh, um, oh, I can't wait to talk about that. It's my happy moment of the week. Um, I'm gonna give Sma- uh, Raw a. Seven. Don't you can't say. Don't even contradict yourself. Don't don't say the points. Well, I can give it a point five. Okay, just not point three or point two eight. <laughs> but I'm gonna give it a regular seven. It, it deserves a seven. It was good. I, I liked it. There was a lot of good things they did. Mid event, it was lackluster. I mean, it was good with Finn Balor returning. He looks. He's uh as we we talked about. Finn Balor's next is is the top guy on Raw right now. He's one of the top guys. You know, what? besides Lesnar, I don't consider Re- Lesnar a top guy. Reigns, they try to push him to be the top guy. Owens is up there, Rollins is up there, Smojo is up there, and you can include Finn Balor up there. Those are your top four right there. Owens, they're all in this match. Rollins, Owens, Joe, and Finn Balor. Those are your top guys in Raw. You know, I'll give it an eight for the crowd. Yeah. For the, the crowd the way, was freaking The hilarious. way they took over the show and yeah. opened the show with the taker, the taker chance gave me yeah. goosebumps. So I'll, yeah. I'll give it an eight because it's the Raw after Mania. But I'll boost up to 7.5. I'll never, Raw probably won't get another eight from me the rest of the year. <laughs> Prince Joan, where was the drifter on Raw or SmackDown? Oh, he was in a mask on NXT. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, El Vagabundo. <laughs> El Vagabundo. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, man, I don't good, know. What... Good Raw this week, but yeah. I'm not expecting anything else next week. Yeah. I'm expecting to go back to the same old shit. Yep. Yeah, we'll go back to status quo Raw next week and SmackDown winning every other week. But they have time. They each have at least well, Smack Raw doesn't have that much. They have four weeks to build or three weeks now to build till payback. Uh, SmackDown has I think three and a half, maybe f- wait no three or four or five more weeks until uh, uh, backlash. So they have time to build. So SmackDown got no excuse if backlash isn't good. They right. finally get enough time to build a pay per view. Yeah. So we'll see what happens um, with the that. The only thing I want to point out is I hate when the commentators. Say that oh the, these these fans are the most bizarre fans of the year. They cheer for people they usually boo, and they boo people they normally cheer for. No, <laughs> no, we just cheer for the right people and boo for the right people, boo for the wrong people. <laughs> it makes no. They're trying to say that these fans don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, they, they they make us they think we're stupid, but we're not. 
Because we're not, it's not all the casuals out there the whole, every week. There's wrestling smart and there's WWE smart. WWE smart are the fucking corporate yes assholes that think Vince McMahon is doing such a good job at Roman Reigns. Then there's the wrestling smart where the internet everyone darlings. else. Yeah, they call it internet darlings, but actually we're actually reality darlings. We know what the fuck's going on and what we want and what you shouldn't be showing. So, so what kind of garbage does that portray? I don't understand. If Derby doesn't do... I know people criticize this all the time. I'm probably going to get criticism for saying this, but Derby should honestly listen to the internet fans. They would probably make a hell of a lot more money if they just listened to us once in a while. Just saying. Like, obviously, you got to do what's best for business, you know, like my hashtag, but mm-hmm. at the same time... Maybe you should be a little bit more open to suggestions. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. So we're going to SmackDown again from the Anway Center in Orlando, Florida once again. And the opening segment deserved to get huge boos because I have a huge problem with this. We open with Randy Orton I opening really a show. need to go to the washroom. Why is Randy Orton the WWE champion? That was literally does absolutely nothing for me. It's garbage to have him as WWE champion, and it boring. makes no sense. It's boring. He's Borton again. Randy Borrington. But why Bray Wyatt lost in the first place made no sense. It's a bear in him. Bray He's Wyatt never, needed a big win. He hasn't win. won a WrestleMania yet. He needed a big win like that to establish himself as the new face of fear. And he wants to say that he's out this god and he's this yeah. demon. But he always loses. And the official hashtag from today, missed opportunities. And then I got people telling me that, oh, Orton, it made sense because Orton was the baby face and it led the whole storyline of him. What? about baby face. They both were. But it, <laughs> They're he, tweeners. But they say because the whole thing with Orton going and joining the Wyatt family and then turning on them and then making them ju- gain his trust. Stupid. And how the whole story ended at WrestleMania with Orton getting his master you know, plan. Yeah. You know, he's the original one that said that he wanted to put Bray Wyatt over WrestleMania. That was not putting Bray Wyatt over WrestleMania. That was burying him. And, and Prince Jones, CGI? we know you told us that Randy Orton would win. We know. Did you we talk know. about the CGI crap? Oh, and the CGI bullshit in the fucking middle of the ring. That literally did nothing for me. And Randy Orton's even affected. Why do it? If, if, Bray, if Orton would have been, you know, petrified or something, it would have made a difference. How are you scared of maggots, for one? That's what I want to eat. Oh, maggots. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh my God. So scary. Maggots. Oh, they just they're, they oh, gross oh, me oh, out. Oh, beetles. Oh, wow. Oh, stop it, WB. You're scaring the shit out of me right now. And they just do this aerial view. Oh, fuck. It was so bad. <laughs> I was just like, what am I watching? Is this a wrestling match or am I fucking watching Cirque du Soleil? What is this? And, and like one RKO for Orton to win. Great. Oh, my God. Talk about the fucking burying Wyatt, man. Just so dumb. And then Randy Orton comes out here. He, he talks about defeating Bray Wyatt and claims that he's proved that he's the true master now. Oh, fuck. Sick, Randy Orton. Wyatt appears on the Jumbotron says that Randy Orton is the master of no one. <laughs> <laughs> and that things between them are just now getting started. He's coming for the WWE Championship. So you're basically copying what Randy Orton told you before WrestleMania. Okay. I'm coming for you, bro. Sick. He challenges Orton to a match at Backlash, but it's a House of Horrors match. <laughs> and I, our buddy knows Phil pointed out, he's like, is it going to be like WCW's Chamber of Horrors? <laughs> and for anyone that doesn't know, that's probably the worst match of all time on WCW. They they did this spot in it where it was an electric chair, and the guy went in, and it was like the worst effects. And the guy's like, <laughs> like fucking like doing the worst kind of acting I've ever seen. <laughs> I think, oh, it's Abdul the Butcher. <laughs> they put in that chair. Oh, it was terrible. And it will sentence the Viper to eternal damnation. So they're copying Undertaker's sentences now? Everyone is. My is yard. That? What is this? And when he loses. So the lights go out and Bray Wyatt suddenly appears in the ring right behind Randy Orton. Ooh. And then uh, as they're attacking each other, Eric Rowan makes a surprise return and pulls Randy Orton out of the ring. And he's got this weird freaking mask with like a pipe going through. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. <laughs> um, but <laughs> he starts going after Randy Orton. Luke Harper comes down for the save. So you got th- <laughs> this just smells Luke Harper turning on Randy Orton so bad, man. As much as it didn't happen this week, like, I don't know. Uh, Wyatt tries for Sister Abigail, but it's blocked and he bails from the ring. And if it wasn't already apparent, there's going to be a tag team match on SmackDown. You obviously never watched SmackDown. Teddy Long should have came out here and yeah. announced it. <laughs> so move on, and we get the rematch for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Oh Alexa Bliss versus Naomi. It was terrible. So one of the matches that should have happened at WrestleMania, again, missed opportunities. They ha- should have had this match at WrestleMania, but they didn't. We have it on SmackDown. This one's good, though. This match was good. And wow, shocker that it was good one-on-one. Woo, that's a shocking I didn't find it right? great. 
I thought it was okay. And Naomi won. It, with her new which is finisher. interesting booking there. Yeah, this new submission finisher you're trying to do now. Twice. Uh, okay, it's better than the rear end. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> I'd rather lose to that than get my a- her ass in my face and get knocked out. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but Naomi winning, that's kind of interesting booking to me. I kind of would have had Alexa win it right back right away. I'm just scared that they gave her the rematch so quick because the mm-hmm. whole trade thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even want to think about it. Dude, your girl's going to Raw. I'm sorry Let's to say, not. but we'll, see. we'll talk about it later. And next... The perfect segment, pun intended. And you made me watch this because I had to go back and watch the replay because, I was, of course, I was at school again. Only yep. two weeks left, thank God. And you're like, watch the Kurt Hawkins. I'm like, why do I want to watch Kurt Hawkins? Yeah, we Kurt Hawkins in the ring. And he says he's sick and tired of hearing about this stupid superstar shakeup because people should be talking about him instead. Oh, fuck oh, about yeah. what? Whoa. Talk about how you got shot in the Battle Royale. I remember when you said you were excited for Kurt Hawkins, and I said you were got to be huffing. Yeah, I know. He says he's going to call it the locker room, and he's going to give him until the count of ten. And then I'm like, oh my god, no way! And then literally two seconds after, I die. Challenger's music hit. I'm like, oh my god, I lost my mind. I'm like, finally, finally, he's getting his freaking shot. The most deserved call up from NXT. Finally, getting a shot in the main roster on SmackDown. Thank you. God, he's and, on SmackDown. Thank God, he's on SmackDown. That's all I can say. He got a massive reaction. And Dude, I honestly think the Ten Chant is going to be the new Yes movement if they continue building him the right way. Because he had a decent match here, and again, it was a showcase for Ty Dillinger, and he wins the tiebreaker for the win in his debut match. He got so over. Man, they're chanting ten for, ten for everything. Even the, the, the pin. Instead of one, two, three, the crowd would chant, they'd go ten, ten, ten. <laughs> <laughs> Biggie wishes he could have got this over with the five thing. Like, he's so over. He had a backstage interview on WWE.com. It was very emotional. Dude was crying. The passion he has for wrestling is absolutely unbelievable. And and a lot of the, the locker room, they don't usually talk about other superstars, but they were all so happy for yeah, him. Yeah, and they tweeted at him, like, people that he wouldn't... He was even saying, like, people that tweet, like, he didn't... doesn't talk to normally, like, a normal basis. And he said this on a radio interview after, that he said he had guys from NXT that he never talked to in NXT, and they are in the same locker room, would say, oh, congratulations, you actually deserve this. And I'm like, he, he was like, holy shit, like, I didn't think I was, well like... Well deserved. I don't think anyone has, has been in developmental for nine, and ten years. And it's worked so goddamn has. hard, man, by changing his gimmick and finding the perfect gimmick with the ten gimmick. And it's done so well for him, and he deserves everything he'll get, man. Guys, if you don't remember, if you watch old WWE, if you know old WWE, and you're, or, you're, you know, unless you're a casual, and that's, up, that's okay, that's right. Um... The, the ECW. Back in the whole DX era. He was also in ECW when it first came back. But the whole DX era, there's a there's a moment where Triple H and uh, Shawn Michaels are backstage. Shawn Michaels is freaking out. And he goes, you, what's your name, Stan? And he super kicks him and all these papers go flying everywhere. That was Ty Dillinger. He I took a spot. Stan. He, did, he took a spot from Shawn Michaels. Guy has done everything for the company, man. So, I'm so happy for him too, Greg. He, he's going to deserve everything he gets. He deserves, and I hope they push Not him the right way because there is so much opportunity with Ty Dillinger to push him as a huge mid card star and, that they need to jump on it right now because the, the 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 ten movement right now is in full effect and they need to ride it. This could be the next guy that w, that the fans really want to push to be that. Yeah, they can do a whole dog. Daniel Bryan story and a, and a whole underdog thing with Ty Dillinger. Because he, he's a relatable guy. He's, yeah. he's come up all the way through he's also got a bingo hall. He's also got a great heel gimmick. And I remember Ty Dillinger, before he, like, when he first started the Perfect Ten gimmick, he was a heel. And if you guys don't know and you guys want to watch, go watch uh, a couple years ago. I think it was two years ago, back in his UK tours. When he did in ring, he would start. He would open the show up, and the crowd would go nuts. Do the ten chance. He'd open up with a promo, and he then he'd he'd rip on the the city they were in, and the crowd instead of tens would be like one, 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 one. And but he was the perfect heel. He's got a, such great mic skills as a heel as well. The guy's a complete package. He is the perfect ten man. The, the gimmick, ta- the, the gimmick is actually a representation of himself. He's awesome. And our hometown hero. We just yeah. want to see him do well. Yeah, and of course, like we're gonna be it, the biasm is gonna be real. Who cares, man? He's from our. Niagara, he's from Niagara Falls, our hometown. He's born in the same city as us, and we like we remember watching this guy at like a baseball park here, where they had wrestling events with like 20, 40 people watching, and he was wrestling in those events. Man, I I remember that for for Christ's sake. He's wrestling under Sean Spears back then. So, uh, good job, Ty Dillinger. Congratulations, our Niagara Falls boy, and you get everything you're about to get. Uh, does you know? 
you deserve everything you're about to get. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. So we'll move on, and we get uh, John Cena and Nikki Bella, or so we thought. The crowd booed at first when they heard the music. But Cena's music hit, and out came Maurice, <laughs> Miz and Maurice dressed like they were in Total Bella bullshit. Oh my god. <laughs> Miz was doing the whole Cena thing on the on yeah. the stage. This was gold once again, but Maurice, man. Maurice mm. did the, the, the Nikki Bella oh ass shake. Oh my god, isn't that she looks better in the Nikki outfit than Nikki Bella does, man. My lord. Uh but Miz and Maurice making fun of John Cena and Nikki once again. They the did the fact whole that, entrance. Yeah. And the fact they're leaving and gone, and it'll be gone for a very, very long time. We're going to Hollywood. <laughs> the crowd's cheering. And uh as Miz is leaving, the the lights kind of turn off a little bit, and I'm like, "What the hell's going on here?" And the crowd turns to the stage, and there's a violinist. At first, I'm like, "Hey, what the fuck is?" I thought that I, I originally when I saw it, I'm like, "Did Miz hire a violinist to play the right? note?" I thought it was gonna be the John Cena theme at first. And then he started going on and playing. I'm like, "Oh my god, NXT Brooklyn, Nakamura, Nakamura!" And I'm like, "Oh my god, I was losing my fucking shit watching this." And then I waited for it, and then the lights finally all turned out, and then. The violinist played with Nakamura's theme. I'm like, oh my god, this is like the best debut I've ever seen. Like, I was dumb. I was dumb. Like, all right, SmackDown wins at that point. I was like, no, take my money, man. Nakamura's on SmackDown. They did everything right. And then Nakamura comes out and just does an entrance. I thought he was gonna do something with the Miz here, and that kind of scares me, cause he had a dark match with Ziggler. I don't know why that wouldn't be televised. Why didn't he have like a televised match? I, I hope don't I don't... they don't plan on trading him to Raw because of this. No, I don't think so either. But the, the reaction he might have got the best reaction the whole weekend yeah. being on SmackDown and that like, was just, loud just his entrance alone was just special like it, it felt like a special moment that we haven't seen in a yeah. long time like a debut that and, like everybody's been waiting yeah. for and I want to talk about something um and someone brought it up on Twitter and I, I thought it was interesting you're like what if do, or he thinks he, he questioned it he's like do you think Nakamura's crowd chanting you know how they do his theme song. Will ever like him being on the main roster now, and him going to be on the main roster more? I don't know whether they do the original plans of just having him appear twice a month or him being on TV more. Does the crowd get tired of singing his theme song eventually? Maybe. Like Th- that's maybe why they, they want to keep him on selected dates so yeah. that the it doesn't lose its yeah. its uh, so, uniqueness. As a beginning feud, I think the Miz, a lot of people loved a beginning feud for the Miz and Nakamura. I think that'd be a really good feud. I'd love to see that. But I think, again, maybe they're waiting for a superstar shakeup. Maybe they'll keep Nakamura there, and if they do, maybe someone that comes over. And already I saw people tweeting going, oh, my God, Roman Reigns and Nakamura is going to be at SummerSlam. But then I saw other people tweeting about something, and they reposting articles, and it was a slight article, and it's already got taken down. So I honestly think it was real, and it's going to happen. I got some inside information for you folks out there. Um... The, the rumored SmackDown uh, WWE title match at SummerSlam so far is Shinsuke Nakamura versus John Cena. Oh, man. I think it's true because WWE wants this to happen at least. You know, they want to yeah. get that out of the way. I would love to see Nakamura style. And, and Cena is scheduled to return around uh, Money in the Bank a little bit after time. So that'd be a perfect way to set up Nakamura and John Cena. Nakamura come out and challenging John Cena. Maybe John Cena wins the title back. Who cares? Okay, it's going to happen. Or maybe I'd really rather see it with John Cena winning the title and going into SummerSlam with the championship and having Nakamura beat John Cena for it at SummerSlam. That would make it huge for Cena's me. Cena's last title reign was, what, three weeks? Yeah. So who knows? But, but that's the current rumor. It's a rumor. So, again, take it with a grain of salt as usual. Who but knows? A special debut for Nakamura. And thank God yeah. they did the right thing by putting Nakamura and Ty Dillinger on SmackDown. Yeah. Stay away from Ross. Stay away from Roman. <laughs> Even though Roman might come be coming over, which is – if they do Nakamura and Roman Reigns, I'm going to be so fucking pissed off. Right. You might as well just, gonna bury... might well just end Nakamura's career to send him yeah. back to the NXT. Yeah. Or New Japan. Just put him back in New Japan, man. <laughs> it's already done. Zip up the body bag. Um, Dean Ambrose versus Baron Corbin in a street fight. But not even for the title. This is interesting. Oh, Greg says Corbin will win Money in the Bank. I think so. I think Corbin is like a wow. leading candidate to win Money in the Bank. Bias pick. No, I don't, you, can't <laughs> see him, you can't see him with the Money in the Bank contract oh, holding it for a long time. Oh, I'm thinking Kurt Hawkins. I, I think, man, <laughs> I do. Baron Corbin is a perfect fit. No, I know. I, I agree. I'm just being, I'm just being Yeah, I know. So, uh, not sure why this was not at WrestleMania Street Fight. And this was not even for a title this week. So, again, confused mixed opportunity here. The, the Street Fight should have been at Mania. Yeah. And 
why this week was not for the, the Intercontinental title for a rematch? I don't know. Maybe they're saving that for Backlash, which kind of makes sense. You kind of need to wait till then. Uh, anyways, the match this week was actually good. It's better than a WrestleMania match. Yeah, that we didn't even get to see. And of course, Corbin show. wins. <laughs> He wins this week. Doesn't win WrestleMania. Well, I wasn't for the title, man. Oh, my God. Missed opportunities all again. Uh, but, yeah. Not really much else to say about days. that. And he won with the end of days. Next, we had Shane McMahon come into the ring. Uh, talk about his dad announcing the superstar shakeup for next week's Raw. He says everyone in WWE should want to come to SmackDown Live because they've created the land of opportunity for everyone. And, boy, is he ever right for that. Uh, AJ Styles then cuts him off and comes out and says that SmackDown is the house that he built. So, okay, at this point, guys, after the, I, I t- stopped talking about this, this is the only reason why I think Styles is staying on SmackDown because of this promo right here. It kind of reassured and justified that Styles ain't going anywhere, but who knows. Um, he says SmackDown is the house that he built since arriving. He doesn't want to go anywhere next week. He says he'll be damned if anyone wants to come in and take them, his show from him. He turns his attention to WrestleMania and says he owes Shane something after that match and extends his hand and they shake hands in the middle of the ring. Interesting. All right, Styles giving respect to Shane McMahon. Styles then actually he's going to punch Shane, but kind of fakes it, and they both kind of laugh it off. So, so is this a Styles face turn or what is this? I don't know. People are saying, oh, Styles face turn. I don't know. I think it was just a, a respect kind of thing. For having a good match? Yeah. I'm because okay Styles didn't think that Shane was going to ha- be able to remember Styles or smack them before WrestleMania. They had that sitting. And Styles like, this is going to be our normal wrestling magic. Are you going to be able to wrestle, you know? Or we can have fists and throw down, which they did. Because, uh, was it Shane that had a black eye? Or Styles had a black eye, something like that? So they actually threw fists. So, you know, I think it's just Styles giving his respect. I don't think Styles is a face yet. Just yet. We'll see. Because if the rumors is with the club coming over, who knows? Uh, we ended the main event. And... God. Luke, Randy Orton, Luke Harper versus Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan. Both both shows this week ended in tag team matches. And this is I I hated this one more than the Raw one because it did nothing for me. Because as Randy Orton's champion makes absolutely no sense for me. Why deserves so much more? And why is Orton teaming with Harper when they they were just yeah battling? And they get with each this other. terrible like halfway through the match, the lights go out and Bray kind of just disappears and ends up on the ramp. I'm like, okay, so he's running away and he let just he just let Eric Rowan get RKO'd and and lose. <laughs> so, Wyatt's well, lost twice in two nights. In three nights. He's lost twice. And that's how we end the show. Like, it was so good up until this point, SmackDown. They just ended it lackluster. It's just like, uh, it was just a, a yeah, mess. Yeah, left a sour taste in my mouth, the ending. Yeah. So I gave it a 6 out of 10 this week. That's why. It was good up until that point. I'm giving it a 7. Ooh. Like Ooh. Nakamura and Dillinger debuting. Yeah, I know. It's it it, it it literally it just bumps it up for me too. Like, if, oh. if those de- debuts didn't happen, I, SmackDown would probably get a four or five this week. Oh, Ty Dillinger, man, I can't believe it. That's that's literally the whole week for me right there. By the literally. way, where in the fuck are the tag teams in SmackDown? Again, no tag teams. The Usos appear in Talking Smack. Oh, well, wow. wow, good inclusion. <laughs> and Nakamura had a dark match on Two Hundred Five Live against Dolph Ziggler, which actually was good because I watched a Periscope version of it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's it for the Raw and SmackDown and reviews. I, Those are our ratings, guys. So Raw wins for on the new uh, new season, yep. uh, week one here, the Lowdown Show. But no feud started really because they didn't want to get anything going and getting people. I don't know. They didn't want people to think they're spoilers with yeah. starting feuds. Oh, that guy's not moving. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. The Superstar Shakeup going to be an interesting Lowdown Show next week to talk about Fresh for sure. Uh, so we're going to the next part of the show. That's our top moments of the week in the list. Of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of ten. The part of the show where me and Cobra Cappy go off our top five moments of the week, and we either give it a ten rating, which is a good rating, or a list rating, and which is a bad rating, and they make the list. So, list of 10. We'll start off, as always, with Corporate Cappy. We should be uh, keeping track of these list moments on my Jericho list. <laughs> but we're not. 10 moment this week, again, goes to Miz and Maurice. Continuing oh. to entertain. Mox, Nikki, and Cena. And Maurice is oh holding, my God, John, oh, yeah, John, I manipulated you into marrying me with, like, her her, her French accent coming yeah. in. It's, it's funny. 
and Miz acting like Robo Cena. It's just fantastic. Yeah. And the whole entrance this week, Miz was getting cheered. Like, yeah. You know, it's good. They loved it. When they finally figured out it was the Miz when he got into the ring, the crowd was like giving him thumbs up and cheering. It was so, great. I don't know where it goes from here because I got interrupted by Nakamura, but Miz and Maurice continuing to mock Nikki and Cena gets a perfect. Ten. Oh, 100%. Without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, my first moment of the week, obviously, goes to Ty Dillinger SmackDown Live <laughs> debut. And that gets a 10 for sure this week, pun intended. Without a shadow of a doubt, it wins it for me. It wins everything for me, man. I am the, such a huge Ty Dillinger fan. And now that he's getting called up, literally just makes everything perfect. Again, pun intended. Um, such a well-deserved debut and call up. Uh, what has been developmental for like what 12 plus years now is it 10 and, 11 some probably 10 <laughs> <laughs> is now finally getting his shot his passion for the business is incredible and he deserves such a big push I can see him being even a backstage role in the near future man like an agent man he's so, he's he's got such a knowledge of the industry for being there so long I think he's gonna be a perfect uh, uh, there to be like as long uh, as, employee for a as long, long as time, they don't man. turn him into the next Dolph Ziggler and I honestly think a 10 movement should follow the S yes movement they should do something along the lines of that hopefully a mid card title run is imminent, and for that, Ty Dillinger gets a definitely a 100% perfect ten. puns everywhere. With Should this, get a puns, perfect puns. ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, list moment this week: the women's matches at WrestleMania took a step back from the triple threat they had last year. Ooh, I mean, yeah, they did. The the fatal four way was predictable as hell. Nothing. No, there was no spots that I can even remember that was worth going back to watch like there was in the Triple Threat last year. And then the, the SmackDown Women, that match, they took it out of the pre-show because apparently about to give SmackDown Women a chance. But then they gave it like five minutes in between Goldberg and the yeah. main event. The only moment that, that stands out for me is Natty doing the... The, the double, double sharpshooter. I know it was kind of botched, but you tried doing a double sharpshooter with two people, man. That's hard as hell. Mickey, Mickey James looked pretty good, but other yeah. than that, it was just rushed. Everything in yeah. that whole WrestleMania was rushed, especially that match. And I feel so bad for the women. They both should have been one-on-one -on -one matches to showcase what the divisions are capable of, not these thrown together, everyone get in the ring and do something match. Yeah. So for that, the women's matches at WrestleMania this week, both. You know what? You just made the list. Yep. I agree, 100%. It's unfortunate because yeah. you know how much I love the women's division yeah. and want to get behind what they do. Yeah. Uh, next moment. Cesaro and Sheamus becoming number one contenders. It's a well-deserved as well. Definitely well-deserved. Looks like the Raw Tag Team Division is getting a major shakeup, and these guys need to be pushed through it. Uh, they gained so much chemistry after being thrown together just so suddenly, and we'll see how long it lasts. Um, but for now, I am all for it. And for that, it gets a perfect... Ten. Yeah. My next 10 moment goes to the return of Heel Emma. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Heel Emma should have never been uh, built as re uh, built in for a repackage as Emmalina. It made zero sense. Well, like, I don't even know why they would try to get away from that. She was so good with that gimmick, and she I see big things from Emma. Maybe she's the next to contend with Bailey for the for the title if they're going to keep Sasha face, which, whatever. So if heel Emma versus Bailey, I think that could be a great feud. And Emma's now single because her and Zack Ryder are apparently not dating anymore. So know, Emma, I give me a that. call. And, uh, um, and Zack Ryder's dating <laughs> someone from TNA. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. So Emma being back and being the heel Emma gimmick that was so good gets a perfect... <laughs> I 100% agree. <laughs> Give me a call. <laughs> My next moment is a list moment, and it's a lackluster main event for SmackDown. Terrible ending to end SmackDown after Mania. Orton as champion does absolutely fuck all for me. I do not care about Randy Orton. He's boring. Him as champion makes no sense. Why? Why do we need Randy Orton as champion in 2017? Bray Wyatt deserves a hell of a lot more. Hopefully Bray can win it back from him soon, or even at Backlash. House of Horrors, as for that, it's probably going to get watered down. It's probably not going to be as big as we think it is. And for all of that... You know what? You just made the list. Yes, 100%. I got one more list moment, but I'm going to replace it with something else. I'm going to replace it with where the fuck are the SmackDown tag teams at? Yep. And why are they not being used properly? For the last, like, four months on SmackDown, the tag teams have been on main event... Or not on the show at all. Not at all. They, and they, then they, at WrestleMania, back. they weren't even in a mad. They were all put in the freaking Battle Royal. They got jobbed. They all got jobbed. And the Usos won the title a week before WrestleMania for American Alpha, which made no sense. 
Yeah, why I they didn't have a match? Thought the Hardys were gonna was show up against. Usos. Unbelievable. So the Smack and obviously the VOD villains getting released. They're out of there. The, the SmackDown tag team division needs needs a resurgence. Maybe DIY goes up. I hope to God they go up. Yeah. But they they need something. They need maybe the New Day going over from Raw. The SmackDown tag teams need something. And until that time, they will continue to. You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, my next moment's a list moment as well. That's making Braun Strowman look weak once again. Why, heaven forbid, that you make Strowman look strong as Lesnar and attack him here? Don't know why. Might as well. Lesnar not even be booked for, you might as well even have him attacked him here because Lesnar's not even booked for payback he's not gonna be there he's a champion you're a universal champion he just all Braun they always walk away and just on oh, my own terms the fuck out of here with that man I don't, I don't care about that Strowman you're you're nothing to me you're garbage and for that Braun Strowman you know what you just made the list 100% sorry to our boy Ty but they're making his boy look terrible right now I know it's terrible God, God awful. So going to my last 10 moment of the week is uh, Kurt Angle being named the new Raw GM. I mean, it's a great boost for Raw. It gives them that big name to be the GM and mm-hmm. to get people excited for it. Obviously with his Hall, Hall of Fame induction, which was legendary. Yeah. All his lo- classic lines at the Hall of Fame. And I just think Kurt Angle being the GM equals ratings, to be honest. Yeah. We might need to bring a Kurt or angle equals rating sign to the next show. <laughs> but uh, for Kurt Angle being back in WWE in general, just awesome. And for that, it gets a perfect. 100%. I 100% agree with that. My last moment of the week is a list moment. And that's missed opportunities. Hashtag. Uh, missed opportunities at WrestleMania. Missed opportunities on Monday Night Raw. And missed opportunities on SmackDown. All combined into a week of missed opportunities. Both Corbin and Ambrose and the SmackDown women's matches this week on SmackDown should have been at WrestleMania. But it weren't. We had them on SmackDown. They were lackluster. Sort of. Bray should have maybe won the title back this week, in my opinion. That's just my honest opinion, but WWE has other plans. And make an attempt at making the Raw divisions somewhat good. And again, I think I know it all has to do with the Superstar shakeup, but this week, they could have done better than that. But nope, nope. Again, for the consecutive week Raw Women's Division and everything else with missed opportunities. You know what? You just made the list. Yes, it makes the list. 100%. It's terrible. Terrible. Missed opportunities. <laughs> so, we'll get into the last part of the show. And that is WWE Headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, ladies and gentlemen, and that part of the show where we talk about any WWE rumors and news. That's out there right now. We got we got a couple. I think we got six. Got six. Six headlines. Now we'll start off with Sean Walton, aka X Pac, says Big Show is not happy with the Battle Royal. Uh, I guess Big Show uh, before the thing. So this this is a quote from X Pac. Before the thing was over, Big Show had a bunch of guys that were in the Battle Royal back. In the back that he was going off on. I think it was over the stuff with him and Strowman. Because they had a, a moment there. And I think the moment got taken away from them too quick. And I think I know the moment that uh, X-Pac is talking about. It just I, I feel bad. I, I wouldn't doubt Big Show was not ha- happy about it. The way they were both booked in that match was terrible. Big Show lasted, oh, like, two minutes? Like, I thought he, he got a match taken away for with Shaq, which he thought... I don't know why he was more high on that match than anything else. He's finally gotten the shape, and then yeah. him and Strowman should have been in the final four. Yeah. It, it, I, don't, I don't blame him for being mad. Whatever. Uh, next bit of news, we'll talk about Simon Gotch gets mutually released from the WWE, so both come to a mutual agreement on the release for Simon Gotch. Thank uh, God. It's being said due to backstage heat. Gotch has with others. There's no, some he's other, already got uh, the fights with Botch Kara and others. Yeah, some other, uh, what's it called, uh, gossip with that. Uh, according to the Wrestling Observer, following the WWE release of Simon Gotch, Aiden English of the Vod Villains is scheduled to receive a push as a single star. On Gotch's release, the Observer noted here that the speculation that his release might be becoming to as a result of a backstage fight involving Sin Cara in the summer of 2016. That fight was said to be a one-sided destruction by Carr, and it was reported at the time Gotch's mouth sometimes gets people mad at him. The observer noted this week that Gotch's personality rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Wouldn't be shocked. I mean, it carries over to their in-ring uh, 
product that they gave us was terrible. Like yeah. I, I was one of the biggest non-supporters of the VOD yeah, villains yeah. since they were called up. They did. They were just bland. Yeah. Like, and, and I English did not enjoy anywhere. them at all. Guy's dating Eddie Guerrero's daughter. He's going to be so protected. Yeah, and he's getting a push. It says they're going to push him. I'm it. glad this team is over. It was. I it think was he gets boring. repackaged. I think they're going to repackage it. Maybe, he has a singing voice. Maybe they do like a singing gimmick yeah, with something him or something. Like that. He could get a lot of heat. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I wasn't a fan of the tag team. And to be honest, good riddance. They yeah. need to get a new tag team in there. So we'll see. Next bit of news, rumored superstar brand switches for next week. We'll go oh, over the Wrestling Observer's report. God. The key moves for next week's superstar shakeup appear to be AJ Styles to Raw uh, and New Day to SmackDown. What Apparently, kind of a trade is that? I don't know. Apparently, there have been talks of moving Reigns to SmackDown, but according to the Observer, <sighs> word is that this week that Reigns is trying to stay on Monday Night Raw and also AJ Styles is trying to stay on SmackDown. Currently, there's no word on which top Raw star might jump to SmackDown. It's worth noting that AJ Styles coming to Raw that SmackDown did get probably the biggest pop at WrestleMania 33 call-up in Shinsuke Nakamura. But they still so. need to have more top guys on SmackDown. You can't have Nakamura being the only guy. Yeah, <laughs> Greg, the drifter and the singer is a tag team. There you go. But why would you... You have so much potential with Nakamura and Styles. Why would you I want to break is, that up? I uh, I don't want them to face each other soon. I want them to hold off till WrestleMania. Well, maybe, well they didn't hard to do on yet. the same brand. But wh- why would you move Styles? They have so many top guys yeah. on Raw already. Yeah. Where are they going to go? Like you said, they got Rollins. Again, it, I think Joe, it only makes Ballard, sense. Yeah, again, it, it only makes sense if they switch them too. Like if you're going to move Styles over to Raw, you're going to have to give him Joe and Reigns and maybe Sami Zayn at the same time. Like you can't one side. I know as much as Vince wants, you can't one side Raw, man. You got to make SmackDown. You can't good give too. away the best wrestler in the company yeah. for for Roman Reigns. Yeah, and it's also speculated that your girl Charlotte and Alexa Bliss will be a switch. My girl Charlotte. Or sorry, your girl Alexa Bliss and Charlotte are going to switch. No, no, Putting girls in the same no. show. I don't know if you guys, saw my point, but I'm, I'm fish, I'm done. If it happens, like I can't, I can't do so it. So your only hope and saving grace is if they switch Sasha. I, the only trade I want to happen is Sasha for Alexa. That way, it co- totally keeps them off the same brand. Yeah. But honestly, a move for Charlotte makes Again, sense. I think, but I think they're hoping for maybe they're looking for an Alexa and Sasha Banks feud down the line. Oh my! They want them to feud each other. That's a, that's a feud. That's a good feud, though. No, because you don't want that happening with your <laughs> girls. It's a it's a feud that needs to happen because people want to see it. Fuck! But honestly, Charlotte, I think that she's done everything she can do on Raw. Yeah, it makes sense for her to go to SmackDown. I mean, what else is she gonna do? Yeah, Greg's a Samson and Andy English as a tag team on SmackDown. Yeah, but. Why would you have them on SmackDown? You don't know what to do with tag teams on SmackDown. So, who knows? Uh, but, yeah, so the, we'll see what the Superstar Shakeup has in store for us next week when we get there. Apparently, I just read something that they might be moving Sasha. I'm like, oh, God, please. Uh, <laughs> WWE no longer, and under the news is a little bit, I don't really have much on it, but WWE no longer listed on Moro Nalo's official Twitter page. So it's looking more and more towards that. Uh, this has to do with uh, Ronaldo's mental health and him just maybe taking it a little too far. So we'll see what happens. Ronaldo. I hope he doesn't go, man. The guy is an God, incredible the guy's commentator. fantastic. And I think JBL should just know him better, man. I honestly think you, you know, if you, you definitely can't sit there and say you didn't know he had a mental health issue. And you, you're, as a commentator, JBL, and for a commentator for years, you should know when you're going a little too far and you're pushing the little buttons. You should have a filter on what you're going to say. So I, I don't really give JBL that much leeway in him. You know. But if he doesn't come back, it's going to be Tom yeah. Phillips as the lead guy. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, next bit of news, Alberto Del Rio's drunken, oh my God. <laughs> drunken films a rant on Triple H. <laughs> Based on his boss with the huge nose. As much oh, as I crazy. love, as much as I love yeah. Del Rio, he's gonna get Paige fired if he keeps this up. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen, it, go take a look. It's on Periscope. Um, God damn, man! And you... the last bit of news will be payback rumored matches. We got uh, rumor matches of Strowman and Reigns for the number one contendership for the Universal title, Balor versus Owens for the U.S. title, Rollins versus Joe, Hardys versus Zaro and Sheamus for the Raw tag team titles, and Bailey is expected to be in a big match since it's in San Jose, California, the hometown of Bailey, and our boy Michael Chow. Michael Chow, you better be going to that. I swear to God, if you're not, I'll like be I said, I would like to see Bailey versus Emma. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. But uh, that's bit that's the news. Uh, the headlines. You got anything else? There was something, oh. and I had it. Then in it, then in it. There was uh, where the hell did it go? God Uh-oh. damn it, botch and hard here. Botchamania. Here it is. Nope. Corporate Kane, or not corporate, but <laughs> Kane expected to make a big announcement next week. Oh, retirement. So my father will be on TV next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just like Glorious Greg's father is, uh, you know, 
Bobby Roode. My dad's better. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it's looking like Glenn Jacobs will indeed be running for Knox County Mayor. Oh. Um, they're reporting a special announcement is planned for Tuesday, and some of his close friends and family have been invited to attend. Mm. W- uh, we don't know what his plans are for the WWE career, but injuries have slowed him down in recent years and has not appeared on TV since November. So his full-time days are likely over. If he runs for mayor, then it, this may close the door on his in-ring career. That's fine with me. I don't want Kane in the ring anymore. <laughs> and he <laughs> backstage role. And he, he, uh, former stars that have also tried to run for politics: Rick Steiner, yeah. uh, Jerry Lawler, Linda McMahon, and Rhino, re- most recent, and Jesse Ventura. Mm. So good for corporate Kane if he's uh, running for mayor. But I'd hate to see him go. I'd like to see him come back as. Like, I picked him in my draft video as, like, a co-GM or a commissioner or something. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. But as for in-ring Kane, he's done. No, we don't need in-ring Kane anymore. Well, I, that's why I want corporate Kane. Yeah. Corporate Kane <laughs> equals ratings, man. Uh, on that note, I think we're going to end it off with that. And uh, that's going to do it, guys. And that's going to wrap it up for the Lowdown Show, week number one, the new season on the Holtz Bar Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten. That's our top moments of the week. And there are to be headlines where we talk about any related news and rumors in the WWE. Remember, every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NSBWP on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself and on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP and it's also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show Brand Wars you can follow the podcast on Twitter at NoHoldsBarWP where you can join in the conversation and have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show we're now also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching up NoHoldsBarWP all links will be in the description below on YouTube so go follow us guys I am your host the self-proclaimed greatest host Kyle Masters and I am every week continue to be joined by my co-host the Blissful Boss it's a corporate himself, corporate cappy. I may or may not be here next week. I may have crawled in a hole and died, depending <laughs> on the trades. And as always, we're always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, get on. Here's on the